Good afternoon. My name is Tavia Danch, and I am the Community Outreach Manager at Colorado State University Global. I am pleased to welcome you to CSU Global's College and Career Success Webinar Series. During this webinar, we will be sharing information on the Masters of Science in Organizational Leadership, Executive Express Path, the requirements to be eligible for this accelerated degree program and the courses in this degree. We certainly have a great program for you today and I am excited to begin this afternoon's discussion, but first I wanted to share a little about us. CSU Global was created by the Colorado State University System in 2007 as the first independent 100% online state university in the US. We have over a decade of leadership in providing quality online education for working adults. Before we get started, I wanted to remind you all of a few things. At the bottom of your screen, you will see a Q&A button. At any time during the presentation, please go ahead and submit any questions you might have there, and we'll do our best to answer as many questions as possible during the Q&A section at the end. You'll also see a chat button there. Please feel free to introduce yourself there. Tell us what you hope to learn today, where you are joining from today, just remember to select all panelists and attendees in the drop-down menu. Finally, after the webinar, we'll send each of you a copy of this recording and a short survey for you to fill out so we can continue to improve and provide you with valuable information. I would now like to introduce you to our speakers today, Dr. Dina Samora, Program Chair, and Dr. Tom Woodruff, Lead Faculty for Organizational Leadership. With that, I'll turn the time over to Dr. Samora and Dr. Woodruff. Thank you, Tavia, for that wonderful introduction. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, those of you on the call, let me ask you a question to get you thinking about yourself as a leader. Um, do you know in yourself that you're destined uh, for an executive role in an organization someday? Maybe the term destined seems a little bit intense, but you know that you want to work in organizations leading at the level where decisions drive the future of those organizations. This level of work is known as the executive role. What we found is that many of our students arrive on the virtual campus with proven leadership experience, but they want to progress that leadership experience to the executive level in their careers. This is why Tom and I created the Masters of Science in Organizational Leadership with a focus on the executive level of leadership. We knew that we needed to address those needs of those interested in this path. So those interested in this path are those established or proven leaders with that kind of experience. Those with the leadership experience are looking to network with those like-minded individuals in a format um, and learning experience that reflects what leaders do at an executive level daily in organizations across the globe. So we, we also knew that our current leaders are busy. Uh, they needed to accelerate their learning, um, yet cover those necessary content um, pieces efficiently and purposefully. So with this in mind, uh, and this specific learner in mind, we developed a path with a six week course layout where uh, students function in the role of leader within these courses. Um, they learn from experts with executive leadership experience. They have all the materials they need easily accessible and cost effective. And they also operate with uh, practical service-minded learning, which is realized through uh, service hours intended to enhance uh, networking and interaction with those various communities and organizations. This is what we proudly present to you today. So let's take a look at the uh, 10 courses that a student leader would take in this accelerated path. Um, the first, Eight courses give you a strong knowledge base in theory, communication, decision making, and all the aspects of leadership at the executive level. The emphasis is on applied learning. We hear over and over from our student leaders that they instantly apply what they're learning in these courses. 
Uh, the final two courses encompass your service learning experiences and the overall executive leadership plan, replete with a recorded presentation for you to use for future demonstration of your ability. Um, in the service learning portion of the path, you will take what you are most likely already doing as a leader in your community. And throughout your program, you're going to record and reflect on those experiences in anticipation of your ninth course. Uh, we'll cover that in detail in the upcoming slides. In the meantime, you might be wondering what type of leader, our leaders, are drawn to the Executive Express path. Well, we put together a brief list of titles that represent some of the students in our cohort. So, Tom, would you share with us the diverse organizational leaders in our cohorts? Thank you, Dean. I would be happy to. Uh, as you can see, this is just a sample of the roles that our current cohort members hold in their organizations. You can see a variety of industries profit, nonprofit, uh, healthcare, human resources, training, education, and military. Broad base, all at different leadership levels. All of them are required to have a minimum of five years, and we'll go over that in more detail uh, in the presentation. But the important part is you as a leader will be communicating and cooperating, collaborating with other leaders. You'll learn from a diverse industry base, and so therefore, everybody's able to input something from a slightly different perspective. This adds so much value to your learning. Uh, it's, it's hard for me to express to you until you experience that, but we hear back from our current cohort members on a regular basis how much they've gained just from sharing and hearing the other perspectives from the other members of their cohort. Uh, and as we mentioned, this is a cohort process. And so when you join up, you kind of follow through the program uh, in one group. And that makes it even a more uh, enticing experience, I think. Uh, I've been, enjoyed that experience in my educational background. And it truly does offer some benefits. Uh, Dina, why don't we go to the next one? Let's talk about how we built this program. Now, when we started out, Dr. Samore and I had many conversations about, okay, what's going to be the basis of this? We have these courses already developed in our Masters of Organizational Leadership program, but we wanted to refine those. We wanted to fine tune them and make them focused on the executive leader, as Dina had said earlier. Now, you'll see four main categories in here, and we developed these categories by doing our own research, by reflecting on our own experience, and by checking with the uh, industry leaders that we communicate with on a regular basis to ensure that our programs are current and meeting the needs of organizations in today's world. Now, organizational leadership, the unique aspect of that, it's not focused on one industry. It covers every facet of our economy including government. We don't talk about that too much right now, but I mean, that's, that, that, it's a part of life. It is every area of our life requires organizational leadership, even in your home life. So, you know, just take that into consideration as well. You'll notice under here, though, we have subcategories. Each one of these areas from leadership, the organizational knowledge, the relationship building, the self-awareness, have subcategories that we focus more on. Now we took this information as we refined our courses to make sure we were hitting on these areas to build these up for you as leaders. These are important to leaders. And so therefore, we want to make sure that your experience includes the benefits of this program. You'll notice too in, in the relationship building and also in self-awareness that we're focusing on that service learning. Okay, that's a major factor for leaders today. You know, we are a, becoming more and more a socially responsible leadership. You know, that, that, that's a focus for not just every uh, leader today, 
but for every organization that's out there, you know, again, re regardless of what capacity they are, they can be the church you attend. Everyone has a part of our community and working together, being socially responsible is essential to success for everyone. And Dean, let's move to the next slide. We'll talk about a little bit of spotlight on your experience when you decide to take this path. Now you'll notice that networking with peers of various organizations, I touched on that already. That's a really important factor. You get to experience not just your own uh, experience from your organization, but also the experience from other organizations, other industries, and that's very beneficial. Expand your leadership influence skills. Influence, and it's, uh, for some people's perspective, that can be considered negative. Oh my God, he's a bad influence. It's not intended in that way. The real intention is to say, okay, how can we collectively, collaboratively come up with the best choice for our organization or for our community? And that's what we're talking about here. You will act as a conference leader. Now, each week we have conferences within the content of the course where we discuss current, current uh, factors, current things related to the course content. In those conferences, you will have the opportunity to be a leader. You will lead the discussions. You can change the questions. You can respond to your uh, cohorts, your colleagues, and let them hear your knowledge, hear your experience as they share theirs with you. Okay? We also have a boardroom collaboration where your faculty member, who by the way, I, I, I didn't mention before, I think uh, Dina may have, but all of our faculty members have organizational leadership experience. They've all either run organizations or started their own. So we, we made sure that we were bringing those valuable assets into the classroom. So it's more than just book learning education. This is lived uh, experience and uh, I can share with you some of my own if you happen to take one of my classes, which you'll be part of. <laughs> now this is, a, excuse me, at an accelerated pace. As we mentioned, we took our traditional eight week courses and we refined them down to six weeks. And some people say, wow, how do we get that done? <clears throat> Believe me, we know leaders are busy. We focus on designing these courses so that they would meet your needs, but at the same time, help you move forward at a pace that you're normally used to. You're busy all the time. We expect you to be busy in these classes, but it will, it will work. Excuse me. <coughs> now, within a class content, you'll make live presentations. And I say live because they'll be recorded, but they'll be part of the uh, course materials. But the purpose of these are for you to become more comfortable to communicate with the other members of your cohort and to get feedback from them. Wow, that was a really good presentation, you know, and hopefully get some constructive feedback as well to say, you know, think about making more eye contact or think about this. And so far in our experience with our cohorts, they're very good about this and very, uh, positive in the feedback. It's not, it's not critical. It's, it's meant to be a positive uh, experience. Uh, factory, fac, faculty role, excuse me, <laughs> as I mentioned, we all are all previous executives and so we can share our own experience with you. And then the, the other factor, which uh, again is extremely important and that's the service learning. Uh, now to me, that's a, a particularly passionate area because we are, uh, as leaders of our organizations, we represent our organization in our communities. But in that process, we also represent ourselves. And so it's a twofold experience that benefits both sides. Okay, Dana, why don't we move on? Let's talk about uh, <clears throat> how they will benefit from this experience. Now you notice here that this is uh, a view, if you will, toward completing the program. And you'll see the same categories that were listed when we designed the course. 
and we design the path with leadership, relationship building, organizational knowledge, and self-awareness. Now, this is specifically looking at what am I going to learn from these things? How am I going to benefit from this? Well, we're going to teach you how to integrate theories of leadership within your own practice of leadership. We're going to help you develop, or I should say, further develop your organizational communication. Because as we know in today's world, we're a very social society. And so how we communicate today is different from how we communicated even five years ago. So it's important to stay current with that. We're going to uh, <clears throat> talk to you about how to assess challenges in organizational leadership today. Now, again, a changing environment. Our world changes daily. And so we have to be current with that, have to be fluent with that. And again, we're going to hit on that service-minded approach because that's important to leadership regardless. Now, in the uh, content of the course, as we've mentioned before, you'll have a requirement for 80 hours of service learning activity within your community, within nonprofit organizations that serve your community. This will benefit, again, both you as an individual, but also your organization. And so uh, I think you'll find that a very important aspect of this program. It will help incorporate these other uh, excuse me, competencies that we focused on here. All right, Dina, I think that's all I got right now. I want to uh, turn it back to you. Well, thank you so much, Tom, for that excellent summary of uh, the student experience here in this path. Um, what Tom and I hoped for in this dynamic connection between leaders across varied organizations is just what we got. Uh, the cohorts are flourishing and they're loving this experience, um, getting to know more about another leader in another setting. Um, so if you're listening and you find that this might be what you're looking for, uh, to take your leadership to that next level, um, here, uh, here are the program requirements here on the screen. Um, of course, you will need a uh, previous leadership experience so that, so that you and your peers can interact with that same mindset as a leader. Um, those of you that are leaders know exactly what I mean. <laughs> and then of course, a 3.25 GPA uh, in your uh, previous graduate work and a statement of intent, um, a resume, a letter of recommendation, and that technology that allows you to uh, share your audio and visual, kind of like what we're using here today. So um, to summarize, um, you can prepare for uh, an executive leadership role uh, through this accelerated program. Ultimately, you can finish it in approximately 14 months, um, and, and you will share in that enhanced leadership interaction and networking, which again is just critical to your success, uh, which, and it's been proven to, with our current cohorts and the research, to be a place that you can learn and, and flourish and, and, and get ready for those diverse organizations uh, with that specific focus curriculum purpose to prepare you. Um, easy access to, of course, the, the, the learning materials. And then finally, that service learning experience that brings about the best in you personally and professionally um, and, and shines on your leadership traits. So I want to thank you for your attention today. And I'd like to turn this back over to you, Tim. Thank you so much, Dina and Tom, for your wonderful insights. I would now like to open uh, the floor up for some questions, and we do have a few here. And as a reminder, please do um, submit those questions uh, in that Q&A section at the bottom, um, and you'll see uh, that menu there. So the first question, what is a typical lecture within this course, and what type of assignments are required? Oh, thank you, Tapia. That's a great question for Tom. Tom, would you take that? I would be happy to. Uh, we, our typical lectures, actually, we, we allow our faculty to have some flexibility with that so they can present their own uh, experience within the course. But the course base is a, we have designed within each module each week uh, some specific content 
that includes both reading and sharp videos. Now to shore up with the current experience of executives, our provost actually interviewed several leaders in organization and asked them specific questions about certain aspects of leadership. And there are recorded uh, snippets, if you will, within the courses that address these issues. So it's a combination of uh, different types of presentation, both reading, visual, audio, to help in your learning experience. Okay, it's interactive very much. Now, what kind of assignments are you going to do? Well, I mentioned the conference rooms before, so you will have that uh, ability to communicate with your colleagues within the program. Now, you're going to do that in several facets. You can do a written response. You'll also have opportunities to do an audio video response. Now, in the assignments themselves, likewise, you're going to have some opportunity to uh, do written papers, and they're going to be focused more on professional writing because we wanted to focus more on you as leaders versus an academic. So we, we put the content focus on what's the best way to communicate from a professional aspect. Now, you'll also include some presentations. Now, these will be a combination of audio, video, they include PowerPoint, voiceover. There's a lot of different varieties. And I tell you what, from our experience so far, our cohort members, as they get each course, they get better and better and more comfortable with these. And that's what the benefit is, because that's one of the areas we as leaders, we're constantly in front of people. We're communicating with people. And so these presentation skills become more important. So that's kind of a quick uh, lowdown. Hopefully that answered that question, no? Thank you so much. And yes, it did. Next question. Do you have any success stories from previous students that took this degree? Again, I think that's a great question for Tom. <laughs> He's worked directly with them. <laughs> I do, actually. We are, our first cohort is coming near the end of it, and we have some excellent uh, experience with them so far. In fact, they're going to be entering their uh, ninth course here very shortly after the uh, after first of the year, and then they'll uh, be finishing up in, I think, early March. Uh, but as far as the feedback we've received, uh, and I've received directly from them, they were able to use some of the uh, assignments because we, we put them in the form of either like a consulting report or a, a presentation for your board of directors, that type of thing. They were able to take that and actually use that within their organizations, like within the course time frame. And, and that to me is a... Uh, uh, exceptional feedback because they put what they are learning in school to work right away or it relates directly to what they're doing and so they can uh, give that feedback and share that benefit to each other. So again, I hope that uh, kind of addresses that question, but uh, so far the successes have been, uh, well, from an academic standpoint, from a faculty standpoint, and an experienced executive standpoint, really refreshing. I mean, it just really makes you feel good because we're doing some good with this program. That's really great to hear. Okay, next question. I am very interested in pursuing a career in the corporate social responsibility field. I am torn between a degree in business management and CSU Global's organizational leadership. Do you have any insight on industry trends for hiring in this field and what they are looking for? Oh, great question. And uh, yes, um, there's that, that um, tear <laughs> between the two and wanting to know wh which direction to go. Management is definitely uh, managing processes and um, tasks, um, managing people as well. Um, in social corporate responsibility, um, that it truly is all about the the executive, what we're talking about here today. So it's a great question. That executive is the person that's going to drive those decisions for corporate social responsibility. Um, the managers, um, of course, will be involved in that. Um, it depends on where the manager is at the level, but what, what the, the people are gonna be looking for, for someone to drive those decisions are somebody that's very, um, 
emotionally intelligent as a leader, somebody that can drive those decisions, somebody that can um, uh, drive, take the organization into the future and, and, and truly think and forecast forward. Um, to me, that speaks of a leader. That speaks of an organizational leader. Not that a manager would not be able to do that, but usually management, business management specifically focuses on those tasks and those processes in an organization. And usually the leaders are the ones that are leading the managers in that sense uh, to make sure that that corporate responsibility is um, across the organization um, wide. Uh, so I don't know, Tom, do you have any thoughts as well about that particular question? Yeah, actually, I, I would love to add to that. Uh, you've hit on the main points, but I think that the point of this kind of question is really focusing on an industry and, uh, you know, what, what's the future in this industry or what's the future in job categories? Because we're all obviously driven by that as an important factor. And one of the reasons why we started the design of this program, looking at what competencies do we want our leaders to graduate out of this program with, provides a basis for covering the broad spread of any industry, any aspect of the economy. Organizational leadership covers the whole facets. That to me is one of the most significant differences in a management program versus a leadership program. Management programs quite often are focused more on the process of a given industry. We look at the whole thing. What's the difference? Process, we look at people. Yes. People are the main assets of organizations regardless of what the industry is. And so I think what we try to share in this program, and I think what we do successfully share in this program, is that ability to continue to develop those skills to work with people. Very well said, Tom. I agree 100%. It's the difference between processes and people. If you love the processes, uh, whoever asked the question, uh, if you love processes and you love to work with um, tasks, then business management's for you. If you love people and you want to drive people and you want to see the organization is truly the people. It, it's it's the the organization is made up. There isn't an organization without people. So uh, and that's if you love to lead people and you love to see to be able to influence them to become better and better. You are influencing an organization to be better and better. The people. Thank you, Tom. That's great insight. I really I like that. Thank you so much. Uh, next question, what are some of the challenges with taking a six week course versus um, the typical eight weeks? That's a great question. And the first thing that comes to mind is time management. <laughs> I think as leaders, we, we, we face that every day. And I think even as, as people, just individuals, we face that every day. It is, it is intense. There's, um, there's no sugarcoating that. Um, the, the work has to be done. And it's, you're doing eight weeks worth of work in six weeks. Um, although we do try to be uh, cognizant of that, and we've made some changes within the courses to, to help with uh, keeping the, the time management under control. And Tom, you may have something to add as well to that. I, I do, actually. From, uh, from the experience standpoint of... Uh walking through one of our courses in uh, modern leadership with our cohort, uh, I wanted to see how this worked because uh, in the, the six week program, basically that's the uh, executive path, uh, we basically trimmed out two weeks from the time frame, but we didn't trim the content. We put that content within those six weeks. Now what's one of the differences in most of our traditional eight week courses, the workload in week seven is usually backed off a little bit to allow them to prepare their portfolio project, which is due in week eight. Now, what we do different here, well, we actually push that, uh, we call them signature assignments up to week five, and they do the written portion or presentation portion pr preparation in week five, and then week six, they actually do a presentation of that. So it's like you've done the groundwork, you've done the research, now present your findings. Uh, and we wanted to see how this was because 
we're very cognizant of again of the the time that le leaders are busy. I mean, everyone's busy today, but leaders are terrifically busy. And so, how would they react to that? Well, the reaction has been overwhelmingly positive because they're already busy. You know, what's the old saying about if you want to get something done, look for the busiest person and give it to them? That's what these leaders are. They are busy, but they take care of business. Now, the other aspect I think that, that comes to play with this, and we pulled them because here we are right in the middle of uh, pre uh, the holiday period when we're recording this presentation. And so I specifically polled them on, you know, would you like to have some time period off during the holidays? And the vast majority said, no, we want to get this done. Please. So they're focused on the goal. So much like with any course within the program, they take on that, that charge, that goal of achieving this, and we're going to get it done in that time period. And so I think it's working extremely well. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tavia. <laughs> Great. For the program requirement, what qualifies as five years of leadership experience? Another great question. Um, it would be you as uh, leading people. That's what we're specifically looking for. Um, again, kind of leadership management. Leadership truly is leading people. So in some aspect, whether supervisor, director, manager, you've done something to lead people. You could have even led uh, within a nonprofit organization. You could have led in a military organization. Um, but somehow you led. And you can show um, through your resume, um, through your uh, letter of recommendation, that you have led. And so that's what we're looking for. Great. And final question. How many students are typically in a cohort? Oh, oh yeah, great. Well, well currently we're running about uh, 15 to 17, um, but we have a cap of 25. Um, so it, it works, uh, so far what we're seeing works very well um, in that uh, about 15 to 17 students. It seems like just, the right amount. Um, you're getting lots of experience from different viewpoints, different organizations, but it's not so overwhelming that you can't get to know everyone. So uh, I think we, we have a really good mix there for our, our, but that we cap it at 25. Wonderful. Great. Well, thank you so much. A big, big thank you, Dina and Tom, for your time and the information that you shared today. This is wonderful. I want to sign up for this course. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, so that now concludes our college and career series. And uh, we really hope that you found this program valuable. Thank you again for joining us today. Uh, on behalf of everyone here at Colorado State University Global, thank you and have a great rest of the day. All right. Thank you. Thank you.